Good afternoon. It's a side effect of daylight savings time that we have uh, a clock on the wall that says that it's a few minutes after the hour and a watch on my wrist that says it's two minutes before. But that's all right. Our call to worship this afternoon is from the Gospel of John, chapter 10. So Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy, but I come that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. to the bulletin for our sentences this morning from Psalm 46. Excuse me, this afternoon. And we'll read responsibly. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Chapter 1. 
Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ, in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace, and he lavishes on us. With all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he proposed in Christ to be put into effect when the time reaches their fulfillment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace be with you from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Please stand at your table for hymn number 463, Precious Lord, take my hand.
Please look to the unison prayer. Let's pray together. Eternal Lord, you are the creator of life, the redeemer of mankind, and you hold our lives in your hand. We thank you for the gift of hope, which can only be found in you. The wisdom you freely give to all who ask it of you in life, and the faith that brings us real peace in the face of mortality. Help us to live courageously, compassionately, and remain faithful to your spirit and your word. In Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I'd like at this time to open the floor. We have a microphone here. Anyone who would like to share an anecdote, to say a few words, to read a eulogy, to read a poem, whatever is on your heart, now's the time. stepfather was Stanley Dudek, and my mom and dad met, and they dated for like six years, seven years before they got married. She had, had us three children, and um, I always wanted a father, and when I finally got him, he loved baseball. I hated baseball. <laughs> I went and watched so many baseball games with him, but you know what? We got to spend time with him. And Parkinson's disease took him, and it stole him piece by piece. It was really hard to watch. He was out of his mind half the time, wouldn't remember where people were, and his suffering finally ended. And then we get COVID, and we couldn't even get together as a family and do anything for him. And it was like, you know, you guys all know you're here for the same thing that I am. But I loved him very, very much. I miss him in my heart every day. I can, I'm going to go early because I'm probably going to break down and I'm going to need time to recover. <laughs> so, my mom passed away last November in the nursing home, and kind of like Roger, we couldn't even get to visit her because she was in the nursing home. I happened to be in quarantine, so I couldn't go spend the last minutes with her. And, but luckily, Pete and my brother Tom got to be there at the last moment, which I was so grateful for. We did an impromptu graveside service. Uh, Pastor Tim, you were fabulous. My son played a little, I don't even know what that machine was called that he played, but it was a little tiny old-fashioned organ that he played Amazing Grace on, Graveside. And uh, quiet, the choir sang because to tell you that my mom was a choir director before I was. And I would say the Grand Canyon and Amity Reform Church were pretty close <laughs> as her almost her absolute favorite places in the world, but I would think the Amity Reform Church probably, you know, won out. But um, I really feel her presence here today. The graveside service was fabulous, but this is where my mom was the most happy and felt most at home. And again, I, I mean, I love the Yemeni family. They were so kind to my mom. And now I'm going to go get upset and be ready to play with next to <laughs> I sang in the choir when Kay Larson was playing the organ. And for John, the things that I'll always remember, and uh, we can look out and see the people who also like the very best diner in town, <laughs> the Half Moon Diner, that was his favorite place, other than going to the dollar store, he loved that, and um, Keith was very patient on many a trip to the dollar store. Um, we made some good trips, and when your passage about the Jordan was being spoken about, I thought of the time John and I went to Israel. And we went to the Jordan River, 
and we went to the Dead Sea, and we went to the Sea of Galilee, and we went to Jerusalem, and so on and so forth. It was a wonderful trip. No, never, never forget that. And I've been to the Grand Canyon, so I know my mother loved it. <laughs> enjoyed every day, so I'll always think of that. staying home and raising her four children, her countless years of being a 4-H leader, lifetime years of service as a lady in the ladies' auxiliary, and her many facets of involvement in this very church. She will be missed, but always remembered, as she cared deeply for her family. And I'm blessed to be a part of that for the last 26 years. I was honored when she offered to make my wedding dress and as well as the bridal court. I'm sure she was thinking, she thought twice about it though, because she learned that I was not as simple as her. It took five patterns <laughs> to make that one dress, but she never complained and always was smiling. Although my children had many things that I'm sure they remember about their grandmother, they'll miss her hot chocolate in the winter, her cookies that were sometimes a little overdone, <laughs> I'm sure some people know that here too. <laughs> and it wouldn't be a sleepover if they didn't have chicken nuggets and mac and cheese. They are blessed to have known her and spent so much time growing up with her. I see so much of them and their grandparents in both of them. Matt and I are blessed to live in the house that Joanne and Art built, not built, but grew together. And that has brought us some peace this last year. Yes, we've made some updates, but I know that Art would love that shop just as much as Matt does. And their spirit is still there. Just remember, be like Joanne, always smile. It says so much more without saying anything at all. here as her, our four little ones grew up in this church. 
But there is a connection because I was raised at the Cajol's Reformed Church and we had a wonderful pastor and our Reverend, I call him Reverend Tim, was a student of our minister in Cajol's. But way back, 66 years ago, when our first young one was going to start Sunday school, didn't want to go all the way to Cajol's, why not go to Amity Reformed Church where Margaret and Edward Schwarzer had their daughter Nancy the same age. So we started Linda here with Sunday school and Alfred and I came to church. I still maintain my membership at my Cajol's church. I must say I am the matriarch of the Cajol's church. <laughs> However, uh, Tim being a student of Reverend Nick, a combination. There it was. We needed a pastor here, and Tim was working together with the pastor in Cajon, and a connection was made. And fortunate for Amity Church, Tim was available. He's qualified. He had the right-hand person named Jesse, and all in all, it got put together, and we know that Amity Church serves everyone because we are a community church, and every one of you here belong to some other church, but there's something that brings you back to Amity. There was a time maybe when you were younger, you sang in the choir, you went to Sunday school, but this was home church, and it still feels like home church. And I still maintain my co-host church, but I, I'm a very good supporting member of Amity Church, as for my children, are coast to coast, but they still feel that Amity, they connect Sunday morning by way of computer. So I think you all understand what Amity Church has been, will be, and Tim is carrying us along. And we appreciate your service, and we appreciate Carolyn, our organist, and everybody else who lends a hand here when we have suppers, outsiders come and help. That's what a community church, Amity Church is. My nephew is here with me. He was born and brought up here and uh, maintains his allegiance to Amity Church. So welcome, and I'm so glad that we're all together <coughs> remembering the folks that were here, our dearest, loving ones that we all miss. And I thank you very much. I wanted to thank everyone for being here. I truly love Amity, and I know my mom, Catherine, my sister Carolyn there. I, this son Tom had happened to be there when she passed. Um, God allowed me to be there because, as you all know, some of you guys might not have been able to be with your family. How blessed I was. I had not seen her for a year and a half. The time that I saw her was her last day. So I was there with her, and it made the family so much stronger as well. But we all have shared stories, you know? And I just wanted to tell you all that there's others that feel how you feel. Doesn't it make you, you know, understand there's someone you can talk to, you know? And I just wanted to share with you how much I miss my mom. And I'm sure you miss your loved one as well. But they know it. And we had such a great graveside service. It was such a great send off, you know, with a shot of Bailey's, because she loved Bailey's. <laughs> imagine us being sad that our mom is gone and hearing something up on the hearing a commotion and it was five four or five members of the choir fully dressed walking up to my mom's gravesite and it just so happened she was choir director you know but she was she loved the church so much but that helped the family transition it was such a great send-off Carolyn was late because she was at the liquor store <laughs>
But just to tell you, it's, it was sad that I didn't get to see her as often. Every time after church, my routine was to go to uh, a Baptist nursing home. And that's, I would see her every, you know, she was battling Alzheimer's. And it just so happened, I got a phone call one night, and she's doing bad. And we lost her, you know, with no time. She was 93. She lived a long life, okay, which we were all grateful for. Okay, but anyway, I wanted to share with you all my love for my mom, but also for you guys for coming and me understanding what you're going through, even after, so far after the fact. All right, but anyway, thank you for sharing this time with us and just seeing how great Amity truly is. So thank you. so much to keep her going for so many years after we lost Dad. So all as I can say is thank you for all me and her friend. Especially as Mary Lou said, rummage sales and the bake sales were her thing. <laughs> Thank you. 
had so many sayings, and I know Elizabeth must know all of them, but I heard quite a few of Grandma's sayings. Grandma always said, the one I remembered is, um, Grandma always said uh, to a wife, you don't have to pin everything on the end of your nose so your husband sees what you bought in the store. <laughs> Leave the bags in the car and wait till you go. That was my favorite. <laughs> but she had so many sayings, and it was Grandma. Grandma filled her heart. She really did. So bravo to all the grandmas out there. Keep doing it with your grandchildren. Uh, she lived through a lot of tragedies. I don't know if everyone knew them all, but... Uh, her father was probably her biggest one, and uh, it was terrible, and nowadays they would certainly take a child to a social worker and get lots of counseling, but Lee got through it all alone, and she had nobody except Grandma to help her. Uh, I met her in, in the mid-1990s when I moved to Clifton Park. Uh, I met her through my mother-in-law up at Spoon Lake, where she had her camp. And the minute I met her, I, I looked at her eyes and I thought, you're a really nice person. And we be, became friends. I lost my mother-in-law, but she and I were still able to remain friends over the years. Uh, she was so good to my family on all the holidays, would always bring an Easter basket to the children or, or lots and lots of Christmas presents, just very, very giving. She had no children of her own, but she just had it in her. She would have been a wonderful mother. She was a wonderful friend. Um, so many things. But the, the best memory I think I have of all is when she did become homebound, very ill, and I was able to take a Bible to her house and share Bible stories with her. And Lee would have never done that in the old days. But she became humble. And she really did love the Lord and accepted the Lord. And I, I just saw that in her life, and she wanted to be in heaven. So thank you all, and just a great person, and I'm so glad I got to know her. That uh, passage that we read from Joshua, children of Israel had just crossed the Jordan River, but God had miraculously stopped the flow of the river so that they could cross over. And that was the significance behind <coughs> Joshua telling them, pick up a stone, take it with you, and where we camp tonight, you pile those stones up so that ever after you'll be able to look at that pile of stones and say, that happened. We did that. God brought us through that. What we're doing here, right now, is piling stones so that we remember. So that we remember what God has brought us through. And we know that he's still with us. Anyone else?
You don't care. You got to quit doing this. People are going to talk. <laughs> 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 I met several one of these folks. I was at the school with uh, Sandy Kudik. When we first started sharing the home, we had windows to school. So I had five going from my friends over here. I've been here for years. I know I've been here for lots of years. I've been here for lots of years. I've been here for lots of years. A lot of good old timers in this church. That's what made this church go. That's what built this church. It's what pulled me out of the Baptist church and landed me here, along with my southern wife from the Methodist church. <laughs> I used to go all the people. The first person I met when I came in was, uh, you here? Yeah. Do you live? So he said, where are you going to church? I said, well, I don't know. I'm a Baptist. He said, yeah, I'm here. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> right, so nice to see all of you here. Uh, we, we love the folks that you lost. And they're part of this church, and uh, please come back and visit us. There is a wonderful church here, there is a wonderful Father, you tell us in the Psalms that precious in your sight is the death of your saints. Lord, we believe. We believe your word and we trust in you. Because of that belief, because of the faith that you give us, we're able to say we will see them again. We thank you for that. We thank you for faith that does not disappoint. We thank you for peace that doesn't have to make sense. And we thank you for love that doesn't end just because the person that we love is no longer right next to us. We pray, Lord, that you would help us to carry on that love, to walk in that peace, and to never let go of that faith. All of this we pray in Jesus' name. Let's pray as Jesus talks. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. The mind is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand if you're able for number 213, because of yours.
and to save lives. If you're familiar with the medical symbol now of the snake on the pole, that's where that begins. So, one act of obedience to save lives from the death and destruction that would result from disobedience. And then John draws the connection. And in the same way, Jesus Christ would be lifted up on a cross. In the same way, one man's act of obedience, Christ's obedience to death, even death on the cross, a death that was bitter and cursed, his obedience to the Father's plan to endure that death would result in life for everyone who had suffered in that disobedience, who had walked in that disobedience. And that's all of us. The best of us have failed at times. The best of us have not always been right. The best of us are still sinners. But Jesus Christ went to the cross to pay the price for all of that sin, for all of us, for all of time. And the only thing that is required for us is to lift up our eyes and look at him on the cross. In the same way that the Israelites had to have enough trust in what Moses told them God had said, to look at that snake on the pole and be saved, we have to have enough faith and enough trust in what God has told us in his word to look at Jesus and be saved. It was an act of obedience for Christ. Make no mistake about it. I'm going to turn for a moment to Psalm 15. Lord, who will sojourn in your tent, and who will dwell in your holy hill? He who walks blamelessly and does what is right, who speaks the truth in his heart and does not slander with his tongue, who does no evil to his neighbor, nor takes up a reproach against his friend, and whose eyes a vile person is despised, but he honors those who fear the Lord, who swears to his own hurt and does not change, who does not put out his money at interest and does not take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be moved. That is the perfect description of Christ. I try to live by this. I do. I fail. I am not perfect. I would imagine that most of us here try to live that way, to be that kind of person. And I know that all of us here are not always successful. But Jesus did it. The ultimate is in verse 5, excuse me, verse 4, where he says that even if he swears to his own hurt, he will not change his mind. Jesus had pledged himself to God's plan of salvation before he was born into this world. And there in the Garden of Gethsemane, before his arrest, with the crucifixion staring him in the face, the very human, albeit very divine, Jesus, was faced with what was coming and said, if it's possible, let this pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. He swore to his own hurt, and he did not change. He stood by the word that he had given. And that is why we can trust.
trust him to stand by the word that he's given us. That's why we can believe that if we look to him, he won't let us down. Now just a few things I want to point out from the 23rd Psalm. He gives us three promises in here that we can hold on to and take to the bank. The goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our life. Which means when we're walking through life and we run into something that's hard and we need a little backup, his goodness and mercy are right behind us. If I run into something and it knocks me on my butt, I've got God's goodness and mercy to push in the blow and help me get back up and keep plugging. No matter what we face, we don't face it alone because His goodness and mercy will follow us. And we have the promise of the house of the Lord forever to look forward to. That's a promise that the people we're here today remembering are already experiencing. They are in the house of the Lord forever. They no longer have to worry about what they're going to run into or what's going to be a hardship for them or what's going to be a problem for them that they're going to have to trust God to overcome because now they can look at him with their naked eyes and see him right before them. They are in his presence for all eternity. There is absolutely nothing to frighten them, to harm them, or to threaten them again. We have that to look forward to, even though we're not there yet. That's our retirement plan. We will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. But the thing that I want you to hold on to right now is the promise that gets missed way too often. When I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. We hear that, and our mind immediately goes to the, okay, well, when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I don't have to be afraid of death because God is with me. And that's true, and that's good, and that's right, and we absolutely should believe that. But the most powerful word in that sentence is the word through. Folks, the valley of the shadow of death is not a place to stop and build a house and stay for the rest of our life. The valley of the shadow of death is something that we move through. It takes everyone a different amount of time to make it through that valley. For some people, that valley is short, and for some people, that valley is long. Sometimes it can seem as cold and as deep as the bottom of the Mariana Trench. But if we keep moving forward, knowing that he is with us, we will come through that valley. We will come out on the other side of that valley. And the thing I want you to remember is that the sun is going to shine again. And you're going to feel it. And it's going to be warm. And it's going to be good. And when you feel that, it doesn't mean that you're forgetting who you lost. It means that you're moving forward and carrying them with you. And that, I think, is what they would want you to do. Amen. Mm -hmm. The final hymn is number 425 in the garden.